This is Algoa, otherwise known as wampum in the English language. This shell bead, found in the American Eastern Woodlands, has supported the spread of the message of peace, democracy, and diplomacy throughout each of the continents through its purple and white patterns. Its meaning as a traditional form of art was utilized by the Indians of America through careful political discourse, foreign policy, and statesmanship by men thought to be savages by the old world. Five nations, later six, came together to form a confederacy, a culture, and a democracy that spread the wings of new forms of government like the bicameral legislature to later give to the new world. Five nations, the Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Oneida, and Mohawk, came together to found a government based on the universal ideals of peace and brotherhood through careful debate and diplomacy, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. The Confederacy was groundbreaking for its time, and would go on to influence the governments and people of the Western and the New Worlds, and the people of all society, forever. We find the game of politics, debate, and diplomacy in the formation of the League, its government, and its actions in modern day. The legendary Confederacy took around three to six years to formulate, though it is difficult to calculate an exact number because of the lack of written down sources from this millennium old event, as the Iroquoian languages didn't have a writing system. The date the Confederacy began isn't known precisely, but it's been estimated to 1000 to 1200 AD. This is the story of how years of debate led to their Confederacy, governmental system, and the peace between the warring nations. This is the story of, of the, the Long House of, of Democracy. democracy. So what was this whole confederacy thing anyway? The motive behind the formation was to restore peace to the warring American Indian nations located in western New York along the corresponding Great Lakes and spread its message as far as possible. They all spoke an extremely similar language from the same language tree, and they were all powerful yet related to each other in some way. Long ago, the great peacemaker, a Huron American Indian, wanted to spread the message of peace and had convinced the Mohawks to discontinue fighting offensive wars and raids. It just so happened that a man named Hiawatha, an Onondaga Indian, had also been wanting to spread this message as his daughters had been killed in Seneca raids against his nation. The both of them saw war as meaningless, and when Hiawatha found out about the Mohawks' policy, he was inspired. When Hiawatha presented this idea to the Onondaga Council, the belligerent and power-hungry head war chief Tadadaho shot it down. Hiawatha traveled to the Great Peacemaker's Longhouse in Mohawk territory with a request to help him spread the word of peace to the original Five Nations, as they had all been at war and suffered too much. Together they reached out to a Seneca woman named Jigonsase to help give the message to other nations, as she was someone they would listen to. They were hoping that in having a Seneca ally, they could strengthen the idea that the Five Nations weren't dissimilar or inharmonious, and they were correct in this conviction. They knew that they needed the other four nations to accept peace before trying the Onondaga. Over time, they convinced each of the five nations by using careful debate strategies except for the Onondaga. For example, they used the circumstances of Tadadaho's passion for war to steal the Cayuga nation as an ally from Tadadaho. As neighboring nations, he had forced them with the threat of an attack to use their resources and men for his raids, and the Cayuga felt totally crushed under the pressure of the massive Onondaga force. When the Cayuga were offered peace by the peacemaker, Jigontase, and Hiawatha, they readily accepted. Once it came time to ask the Seneca for peace with Jigontase, the Seneca were divided on the offer. They had the most reason for war, as all of the American Indian tribes and nations west of the Five were focused on war. To solve this issue, the three created a system for the Seneca's peace that would keep all parties happy. Hiawatha called on all of the chiefs of the nations who had accepted peace. The Mohawk and the Seneca sat on one side of the fire and accepted new ideas first, before going to the Oneida and the Cayuga. Both of the larger nations were seated together so that neither could have an idea of getting more power over the other. The smaller nations accepted new ideas second to protect themselves and their interests in case the larger nations were ganging up on them. With this new system, the Great Peacemaker had just invented the first bicameral legislator in the entire world. The Mohawk, Seneca, Oneida, and Cayuga came up with a system that was fair and benefited all parties and also let the Seneca join the peace. The larger nations were given the role of the keepers of the doors, the Mohawk having the eastern door and the Seneca having the western. If a person, group, or nation coming to the confederacy declined the idea of peace and wanted war, they could temporarily give up peace and fight against them only in defense. And with this new agreement, the Seneca joined the confederacy. It was time for the confederacy to speak with Tadadaho. Once the three traveled to his longhouse, they knew he wouldn't accept unless there was something in it for him, and they were sadly correct. And thus they formed an ultimatum. Tadadaho and the Onondaga could join the confederacy, or lose out a war and be annexed, or be severely damaged as a nation. 
They also gave the Onondaga benefits, like having the honor of being the central flame, their council always meeting in the Onondaga territory, and they had the final say in said council. Tadadaha was given the role of lead sachem of the Onondaga, and by extension, the whole confederacy. Machiavellian ideas started swarming in his head with such power. However, Jigonzase saw what he was planning, and challenged the evil ideas by ordering Tadadaho to strike her physically. Tadadaho, in shock, asked why. She responded that she knew of how he abused the women in his longhouse, and what he had done to his fellow clan members, and the other nations like the Cayuga, that Tadadaho would lead his nation with harshness and power. Tadadaha finally understood why the nations wanted peace, and like such, the Confederacy had finally been created and everyone had given up war. To understand the admittedly complex government of the Haudenosaunee, we must start at the lowest levels of administrative authority, clans. There are a total of nine different clans in the Confederacy. The Wolf, Bear, Turtle, Beaver, Snipe, Deer, Heron, Hawk, and Eel clans, respectively. The Senecas had eight tribes, the Cayugas 6, the Onondagas 8, the Oneidas 3, and the Mohawks 3. Each clan mother was in charge of appointing chiefs to represent the wishes of her clan family. She could also remove them at any point for any reason she deemed fit, which included if other clan family members were dissatisfied with the chief's performance. These chiefs could be any males of the clan family that she entrusted with clan power and trained to use, and with them, we've reached the next level of administrative authority in the Haudenosaunee. There were four kinds of chiefs. Peace chiefs who handled foreign relations, civil chiefs who handled civil matters, war chiefs who were wartime experts and leaders, and the sachems who were entrusted with the management of the Grand Council, something we'll get to later. As we can understand, each chief was closely tied to their clan mothers and always obeyed their requests. We've seen how clans can form a nation, but how did the nations form the confederacy on the administrative level? There were two main parts of their legislature and decision making. The first were the Mohawk and Seneca. These two were the keepers of the eastern and western doors respectively. The second half, referred to as the Little Brothers, were the Oneida and Cayuga. The Onondaga were called the Central Flame. A central flame is the main place of heat in a longhouse. So calling the Onondaga this was representative of them being the heart of the Confederacy. The name Haudenosaunee actually means people of a longhouse. This means that one, the Haudenosaunee and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy are separate entities, and two, their proper name that they chose to call themselves by related to their diplomacy, statesmanship, and government, while also speaking of their culture. You could say that diplomacy, statesmanship, and government were their culture. We can think of this confederacy as a longhouse itself, representative of what the people call themselves. Every fall of each year, the Grand Council, their legislator, would meet. The people who participated in the legislature were the sachems. However, the council could be summoned by the Onondaga Nation at any time as part of their role as firekeepers. Any sachem could suggest an idea to the Grand Council. It is first approved in its originating nation. Then it must be decided by the brother nation. For example, Oneida's idea would go to Cayuga. If both nations agree, the next two nations make their decision on it as one group. Once all four were in agreement, the Onondaga made the final choice, taking into consideration the opinions of the four other nations. They had the power to finalize anything that would come to the council, as well as veto anything. However, the power of negation was rarely used. Everything related to it was laid out on a highly important and influential document, the Great Law of Peace, which along with serving as an official truce between nations, served as the constitution of the Confederacy. Although the true original document and its messages will never be known, as it wasn't written down, it has been rewritten as closely to historical accuracy as possible, so it's easy enough to get a general idea of the message as intended by the Great Peacemaker. This is the document that explicitly laid out the plans for the Grand Council system. Every decision in the Council was made for the benefit of the next seven generations. As the Great Peacemaker stated, When you administer the law, your skins must be seven thumbs thick. Then the magic darts of your enemies will not penetrate, even if they prod you with their points. The Great Peacemaker here was referring to the thumbs of people, meaning future generations. He wanted the stations of the Grand Council to think for the good of the next seven generations of people of their nations when making decisions for the Confederacy. The Peacemaker follows the statement up by explaining if they succeed in this assignment, they cannot be touched by the enemies against democracy, such as hatred, evil, or simply other Axi nations. And it was true. As we've seen, the system of government has let all people and both genders of the Confederacy have a say as well as all of the nations, no matter their physical might, as that didn't matter anymore in a society of peace. In summary, clan mothers were in charge of appointing chiefs to the nations to help in all sorts of systematic troubles. The people of the longhouses made a clan, the clan made a nation, and the nations made a confederacy. This is why the Haudenosaunee refer to themselves as the people of the longhouse.
In 1744, Benjamin Franklin and other American colonists met with Tadadaho Kanasatego. For context, the Tadadaho is the lead sachem of the Onondaga, and by extension the whole confederacy, like a role. When the colonists were learning about the confederacy, the Tadadaho strongly suggested that they start a union of the colonies, stating, Our wise forefathers established a union and amity between the five nations. This has made us formidable. This has given us great weight and authority with our neighboring nations. The colonists later went on to have a tea-flavored dilemma, and Benjamin Franklin drafted the Albany Plan of Union. Although the idea failed, it got the ball rolling for what was the American Revolution and was the forerunner for other plans like the Articles of Confederation and later the Constitution. Franklin and other colonists who knew about the Confederacy took the Haudenosaunee's request to form a union against their oppressor for their own good. Another example of their influence on democracy, the Haudenosaunee believed that a government in chaos was no better than a government at war, and they devised a system of total agreement between nations and systems. They need agreement to function, just as all of the United States sections of government, as in the judicial, executive, legislative branches, need to be in agreement for laws to have meaning. Through a bicameral legislator, they forged an idea of harmony in governmental systems, as much harmony as a political structure can have. After the Americans succeeded in their revolution, the message of democracy spread directly to France via American politicians in their country, and of course, the French later went on to have their own revolution. Those ideas were indirectly spread through Napoleon's conquest throughout the European continent and inspired countless monarchies and republics like Prussia and Austria-Hungary, Russia, and countless more to form governments founded on equality and freedom, and of course, using the bicameral legislator like France, the US, and the Haudenosaunee did. More than 80 nations went on to use the system, and their flags are displayed on screen now. Through our journey through the story of the Longhouse of Democracy, we've seen how their culture was forged through political debate and statesmanship, and how even men and women who were thought to be savages could form a democracy of nations and libertarianism to rival in ideas even the most powerful nations today. We've seen how debate and diplomacy can come together from the most unexpected of places and later go on to influence the entire world. But most importantly, we've seen how peace and forgiveness in culture and democracy is an important piece of the concepts of debate, government, freedom, diplomacy, and progressivism. And with the story of the Longhouse of Democracy concluded, Farewell. Farewell.